Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a quick update because um, people have been asking me. Um, so I've had I had dizziness and like vertigo attacks uh, around two years. Uh, I was di diagnosed with labyrinthitis, then vestibular migraines, <laughs> and then they said it wasn't vestibular migraines. It was um, they thought it could be sinus. Um, I needed septoplasty and these two maxilla max I could never say maxillary sinuses were completely blocked. Um, so they suggested that this could be causing dizziness because um, when they checked my ears on the scans they could see there was no fluid in them at all which can cause dizziness and vertigo and they look quite healthy. So I personally believe I had a car accident about five, six years ago now and they think that the head trauma because it hit here it could have compressed my sinuses and caused them not to drain as much as they should have. So every time I started getting a cold or flu, I started getting dizzy. Now it happened over time, over about two, three years after the accident. Every time I got a cold or flu, I'd be dizzy for months, weeks. And then um, two years ago, everybody got labyrinthitis in the office, literally. Now you can't really catch labyrinthitis, but there's a very strong virus that you can get that can trigger labyrinthitis. And for some reason, about eight of us have got it in the end. And I got it. Now, everybody else healed, okay, and I did not. God, fuck, sorry. I'm <laughs> just thinking back at it. It was horrific. Um, like, for six months, I couldn't, um, I couldn't even walk outside the house. I couldn't get up the stairs. Um, everything was moving like I'm on a boat. I felt absolutely exhausted. Um, looking at TV for five minutes, I'd feel absolutely knackered and have to sleep. Uh, I couldn't do food shopping. I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't walk in a straight line, and it went on for six months, I mean extreme, I'd have to hold on to a wall to get about. Um, so how I got better, gradually over time, um, it naturally got better anyway, because your body does compensate to some extent. Now, I did try some VRT exercises, which did help, but to be honest, the main thing that I think really helped me was, whereas other people of this, um, dizziness vertigo, they don't want to go out of the house. I would force myself to be in uncomfortable situations in a crowded supermarket where the lights can trigger an, an attack. And once you force yourself to do that, and living in London, I'm confronted by it all the time. If I walk out the door in Hammersmith and it's like three lanes of traffic and it's mad, I think I healed quicker because of it. Whereas some other people that don't want to go out and don't want to experience that and are worried about doing it, they're taking longer to heal. So you can probably tell I'm really bunged up. I had septoplasty and sinus surgery um, 10 days ago now. I've never had a general anaesthetic. I was absolutely <laughs> terrified. Like for three, four weeks before I wasn't sleeping. Um, I had anxiety 20, literally 24 seven. I, I absolutely terrified of general anaesthetic. And it wasn't about not waking up, because I thought, if you die, you're not going to know anyway if you don't wake up. But um, for me, it was waking up in the middle. I'm one of those people that probably saw a documentary on Sky at some point, and I, I think I remember people saying they woke up in the middle, they couldn't move, but they could feel everything, and I, I'm like, no way. But then at the same time, I thought, if septoplasty increases my breathing, it helps the drainage, um, it helps the exhaustion, which is the biggest issue I have at the moment, then it's worth it. So um, I got it done. Anesthesia was fine, actually. It's really weird. Um, if you've got vertigo and dizziness like me, your biggest fear is probably about spinning out before you go in. Um, they said to me, you might feel a bit woozy and spinny, and instantly I'm like, I'm not getting it done. I don't care. I don't want to have that experience. Um, so I was petrified, and I went in. I was holding their hands. I was trying to be all cool at first, and I'm like, then, then um, things started to move a bit. And then I'm like, can I hold your hands? I was out of my face. And, and then I would just woke up and I was uh, in the wards and it was all over. So just to let you know, everyone's different. But to be honest, things moved ever so slightly. But probably what you're used to now anyway. You know what I mean? So don't think everything's going to woo because it didn't. And that's what I was petrified of. So I woke up um, really high on drugs. Uh, came out with some weird stuff as well. Um... Our anesthetologist to sing the Polish anthem for some reason. Um, but I, w I woke up and the other biggest fear I had is being in a lot of pain. Now, the weird thing is, I didn't have a lot of pain when I woke up. Um, 
I woke up, I felt fine. I wasn't sick. I was worried about being sick a lot. You probably get that because if you're dizzy, you get vertigo, you worry about throwing up in public and that kind of experience, you know, the, the cold sweats. Um, I wasn't sick at all. I was fine. Um, but the biggest thing I found really hurt was my teeth up here. And that kicked in three days after. And I won't lie, it was painful. Um, probably eight to nine out of ten to the point where it was throbbing so much. I, I needed stronger painkillers than codeine and what they gave me. I just couldn't handle it, to be honest. And that's because it's a nerve running between your septum and your teeth. And it can be compressed and damaged and inflamed from all the surgery. Um, so that's the, the hardest thing I found was that. Now, you do bleed. Now, after the operation, I was having nosebleeds, but it wasn't gushing out or anything like that. Another important thing to say is I didn't have any of the packaging, which can make it worse. Um, some surgeons will put packaging in, cotton wadding, all the way up to here, and then you may need to get it taken out two or three days later. And to be honest, it looks grim and looks painful. So I'm relieved I didn't have that. Now, the stitches should come out on their own. I already can see one or two coming out after 10 days. Um, and it's it's sore. Ow. <laughs> so if you do that, your nose, a bit of be which going on. If you do that, obviously, you can feel a bit of pain still. Um, and it's just hard because you can't blow your nose either. You're not meant to blow your nose for two, two, three weeks. OK, so that obviously you're congested to hell. So I'd say the biggest issue I had was the pain in my teeth, um, constantly bunged up and just feeling like crap. Um, but it was manageable. Now, I'm going to have to let you know how it goes because it's only been 10 days after surgery. Uh, I should start to get good effects after two months and I'm hoping it's going to help with my sleep because I get really bad insomnia. Um, especially since I've had all this, I go to sleep, I worry about money, job, what am I going to do, that kind of thing, you know. Um, you probably do know if you've been in my situation. So, yeah, I have problems sleeping. But other than that, I'm not any on any medication anymore. I used to be on migraine medication, um, anxiety medication, which is horrible. Um, I only take Stematel, which helps with dizziness um, if you get a bit of a spin. Um, it takes the edge off it. It doesn't cure it or anything, you know. So that's the only medicine I, I've been taking. So I'm hoping after two months I can come back to you and let you know how my breathing is going and everything like that. But the biggest point I want to make is, even if you don't have the surgery, I just want to let you guys know, it did take two years, but I did get better. Just before the operation, I was going out drinking. I was uh, watching live bands, stood up for hours. You know what I mean? I, I would never think that would happen. I, I thought I'd have this for life, really. And I honestly thought, if I had this for life, I couldn't carry on living like this. No way could I carry on living life, feeling dizzy, spinning out 24-7, everything moving. No, who, what kind of life is that? Why would you want to live that life, you know? So it's really important. I know how close to the edge people can get with this. But you can get better, okay? You need to push yourself, okay? Um, obviously, be sensible. Don't start crossing main modes or anything like that. But even if someone can come out with you, a mate, and just walk you to the shop and back, okay? Um, but you can get better. My experience, and I was bad. I had to give up my job. I was housebound for months on end, literally months on end. Um, I lost a lot of my friends because I couldn't go out and see them. I got extremely depressed at one point. And I didn't even know it. I had anxiety, insomnia, exhaustion. I was the lowest of the low. I, I could not get any lower and I didn't think I'd heal. Um, so to see where I am now, okay, just before the operation, out partying, out with friends, drinking, busy bars, lights, everything. It shows you can do it, okay? And I just want to give people hope because I know I get upset now. Because I know what it's like when you feel like you haven't got hope and... And no one gives a shit, they don't understand because you look normal and no one really understands what you're going through. And I get you, I understand what you're going through, okay? So if you need to get in touch, you know, send me a message, okay? Because I will be there for you because I, I get it completely. Um, also go on Facebook, there are some websites for vertigo, labyrinthitis, migraine support. You just pretty much got to type in the search bar, bar what you want. So migraine group, labyrinthitis group, okay? And join the support groups and speak to people. But in general, I'd say get out as much as you can and keep moving as much as you can. It does get better. Okay, bye guys.